Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Car Audio Lab. That's right. Today we have a special one. We're gonna do a review. Are you excited, Fernando? I'm excited. What could we possibly be reviewing? Well, if you've been following along, like I know a lot of you have, you have an idea of what product we're gonna talk about. For the rest of you that don't, stay tuned, because here it comes. So today we have a couple of Rockford amplifiers. We have the old one, which is the PBR 300X4, and we have the new one that is the the bbr 400 x 4d first we're going to go over the differences between the old one and the new one and then we're going to go ahead and put the new one in the lab so let's go ahead and get started first up is the unboxing let's go ahead and take both the amplifiers out and see what comes in the box we'll start with the old one you get some paperwork. Basically, this is an update that they added talking about the grounding as far as in a motorcycle. Just gives you a brief description on how to do that so you properly ground the amplifier. Next is gonna be the burn-in sheet to tell you how the amplifier actually did. In this case, this one did 85 watts by four with a total power of 333 watts. Inside, you're gonna get two sets of RCA connectors that have the four pin plug on the end. One is gonna be your rear, which is purple and green. The other one is gonna be your front. The reason why they're designed the way they are in that they have these color wires and then they go off to these RCAs is because this is gonna be used for high level as well as low level. So if you're going to be using this to put in something that's high level, you're gonna go ahead and cut the RCAs off. Now that's not to say you can't go ahead and make some nice ends that plug into this so you don't have to do that. Whatever's up to you, but that's how this plug was designed. Now there's two more plugs in the box which are gonna be your outputs and there again, you have a set of white and grays for fronts and purple of greens for rear. Now located in the bottom of the box is gonna be your instruction manual. Now as far as the amplifier itself goes, there's one other thing on it, which is gonna be this guy, which is your power plug. This comes pre-plugged into the amplifier. As far as inputs and outputs go, you have your input side, which is gonna be where your RCAs are gonna plug in, and then you have your output side, which is gonna be where your speakers are gonna plug in. Now let's go ahead and unbox the new amplifier. Now the new one is gonna start out with that same grounding instructions for the motorcycle. It's gonna have the burn-in certificate as well. They've changed the burn-in process between this version and this version. In this case, they're giving you the total output, which is gonna be 512 watts. It's 127 watts a channel on the front two channels and 129 watts on the rear two channels. Then you have the new sheet that this comes with, which is gonna be the instructions for using the clean circuit that's built into it, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then also to explain how to wire the amplifier up. Now this box is gonna come with the same exact connectors that the 300 comes in. You get the two connectors with the RCAs, you get the two connectors with the wire. Now located in the bottom is gonna be your clean setup disc. Go ahead and keep that, don't lose it. Now on the amplifier, it's set up very similar in that you have your inputs on one side and then you have your outputs on the other. And then of course you have your main power plug, which brings us to one of the first differences is the power plug. Now taking a look at the side, you can see this is the old 300 and this is the new 400. The new 400 is a tad bit bigger, and that's because they changed the power wire requirements for the amplifier. The 300 required a 10 gauge. The 400, because it's a bigger amplifier, is now requiring an 8 gauge. Now, when looking at both amplifiers from the end plate, the 300 being the one on the top, the 400 being on the bottom, they look almost identical other than the newer, bigger plug. When you flip them over, as you can see on the input side of the amplifiers, they are a little different, this being the 300, this being the 400. So let's go ahead and talk about what makes these amplifiers fires different. Now naturally the first thing up on the list is going to be power. What kind of power do these guys have against each other? Because that's the most important thing. This is your 300, this is your 400. Now your 300 is going to have 75 watts by 4 at 4 ohms. Now your 400 is going to have 50 watts by 4 at 4 ohms, 100 watts by 4 at 2 ohms, and is capable of bridging and being 200 times 2 at 4 ohms. Now I'm not going to lie, that's the main feature that's got us most excited about this amplifier, because now you can run this in mixed bottom mode, meaning you can use it as a three channel amplifier. One and two can run a set of fronts, and three and four can be bridged to run a subwoofer, which in this case is what we're gonna do in our lab. Next, as we've already talked about, this requires a 10 gauge power wire, this requires an eight gauge power wire. Operating voltage between the two is nine 
to 16 volts. Recommended fuses on the 300 are going to be 50 amp and 60 amp on the 400. Average current draw on the 300 is going to be 20 amps of current. Average current draw on the 400 is going to be 27 amps of current. Max current draw on the 300 is going to be 40. Max current draw on the 400 is going to be 50. Now idle current on the 300 is 39 amps and because of the more efficient 400 idle current is only 27 and a half amps. Now the efficiency on these amplifiers has changed drastically. This one is 55% efficient at 4 ohm. This one is 75% efficient. That's a huge change. Now input sensitivity on the 300 is 150 millivolts to 11 volts and on the 400 is 150 millivolts to 12 volts. Now let's take a look at the end again. Now located on each one of the amplifiers here and here is a two channel four channel switch and what that enables you to do is only use channel inputs one and two on both amplifiers. This is very helpful if the device you're using such as let's say a Bluetooth dongle or an aux jack or anything that just has a left and right output and it'll automatically populate the three and four inputs internally in the amplifier. That way you don't have to use any Y jacks or anything like that. Now the next two set of switches are located here and here and here and here. These are going to be your crossovers. Now on the 300 it's a selectable high pass or low pass crossover. That's right it'll do low pass. Even though you can't bridge it you can still use a subwoofer on one and two three and four without bridging. You just have to keep it in stereo. But you have a high pass or low pass 80 hertz switch. Now on the 400 you have that same 80 hertz high pass low pass but they've gone ahead and give us a little bit more information about them. It's a Butterworth style crossover at 12 dB and the high pass is selectable at either 60 or 80 hertz. The low pass is just going to be 80. Now on the 300 this is your input sensitivity for your high level input so you'd adjust that here. That feature is no longer needed on this amplifier because of the clean circuit. It has your input light indicator here for clipping and then you have your output clip lights here. Now both amplifiers are the exact same size. 1.53 inches tall by 6.75 inches long by 4.25 inches wide. Now one of the big things that makes the 400 more powerful and able to do things like doing the bridging and whatnot is this uses their boosted rail technology. This is a full range class D amplifier. So it has evolved into this guy here. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what's inside these amplifiers. This is the 400 and this is the 300. The capacitors on the 400 are definitely bigger than the capacitors on the 300. These have a 2200, these have a 3300. On the 300 if you look at the side of the amplifier here and the side of the amplifier here, there's definitely a lot more going on. On the 400, it's just right here. That's it. On this side of the amplifier, perfectly clean. Now if you take a really close look at the 300, you'll notice it's a much busier layout than what's on the new 400. There's a lot of things going on along here. This is the new 400. It's just a much cleaner design for sure. But no matter what the inside of the amplifier looks like, it's what the output does that really matters. So let's go ahead and get this installed in the car and see what kind of performance we can get out of the new one. Now for those of you guys that are new to this and have never seen the car lab videos before I encourage you to go back and watch them the car lab consists of Fernando's g35 and what we've done is set up a test bench in the back of his car let's take a quick look at it shall we so inside the car we have the output from the radio here in this case we're going to be doing high level he has the factory g35 radio in here we have our speaker wires connected here everything is on barrier strips so that it's easy to swap in and out we have our two test amplifiers that stay permanently installed as well as we also have our ground and power distribution and power accessory ground and remote from the radio itself. Going ahead and add in is our new wiring here for the input. We're just going to be using the two channel input so we're going to flick that switch from two channel to four channel. We've gone ahead and added in our A gauge to our factory plug. So let's go ahead and grab our amplifier. We can set it right here. We can turn this thing on and we can take a listen. So like we said we're just going to be using two channels so we've made sure the switch is on two channel not four channel. The fronts are going to be high pass. We're going to go ahead and turn those to 80 and then we're going to use low pass for channels three and four. We want to go ahead and make sure our gains are set all the way to their minimum. We can go ahead and on the back side plug in our speaker output for front here. We can plug in our power input here and we can go ahead and put in our subwoofer on three and four. Now if you look at the power plug the one thing you'll see missing is a remote turn on. We're going to be connecting this high level. This uses DC offset from the speaker to go ahead and turn the amplifier on for us so we don't need to worry about connecting it over here to our signal turn on. Now the only thing we have left to do is connect our RCA output from our front channels to this amplifier. So 
So now our amplifier is hooked up. What we want to do now is use the clean circuit. The clean circuit is the distortion detector that's built into this. For that, we're going to need that CD we had earlier. This guy. Now what we're going to do is on the back here, it's got a bunch of tracks that we want to look at playing. What we want to start with is track 7, which is going to be 1000 hertz at 0 dB. When you're testing the output of the radio, that's where you want to start. Now even though we've just plugged in the speakers, we're going to go ahead and unplug them because when you're doing this form of testing, you definitely want to make sure you don't have any speakers plugged in. Now the subwoofer is not plugged in yet, so I'm not going to worry about unplugging that one, but the front was, so we've gone ahead and unplugged that. So we're going to go ahead and play track 7, which is 1000 hertz at 0 dB. Fernando, go ahead and turn up the volume. Alright, so we have no clip indicator showing us that a thousand hertz is clipping. Now we'll switch to 40 hertz at zero dB, which is going to be track five. You still have the volume all the way up? All, the way up. all right, so we're still not showing any clip indicator on our high level out of our radio. That's a good thing. So now what we want to do is go back to our disc and we want to go to 1000 hertz negative 5 dB, which is going to be track 11. The negative 5 is just going to give us some headroom on the gain of the amplifier. So depending on what type of music we're listening to, we'll have a little bit of headroom. So for example, if we're listening to something like classic rock or something that might be recorded not as well as let's say new stuff, we'll have a little bit more room to turn the volume up. It's also very helpful if you're using this amplifier for let's say a set of components where you need to be able to let's say turn something down or it's called gain overlap. We'll go ahead and play that track. Put it at a thousand hertz negative five for me. All right so as you turn it up you'll notice that blue light right there. That's what we want to see. We don't want to see it red. We want to see it blue. Now we're going to do the same for the subwoofer. Now the subwoofer depending on what you're listening to you may want to do negative five or go up as much as negative ten. That'll give you a lot of headroom. We're going to stick at negative five though so we're just going to play track nine. Go ahead and do 40 hertz negative five for me. This will do the same thing. Lights up blue, red, turn it down. Blue it is. All right go ahead and turn the volume down. Now one thing I didn't mention that I forgot to was that Along with unplugging the speakers, I went ahead and put my crossovers back to all pass. Now we'll go ahead and we'll put this back on low pass on three and four. And we'll go ahead and put it on 80 hertz for high pass on the front. Come back over and we'll plug in our front speakers. Now our amplifier is all set up and ready to go. Now we're just going to go ahead and plug in our subwoofer. Now for those of you that didn't catch the last show we did, our subwoofer is a Rockford P2 8 inch driver in a ported enclosure. Now this little amplifier, this little tiny amplifier, we're using it to power our front speakers which is a six and a half set of components. So we have a tweeter, we have a mid bass, as well as power that 8 inch sub. So this is a standard front sub combination. We do have passive crossovers that we're using because it's not active. And this is a nice little system that you can put in almost any car. And the size of that amplifier will make it real easy to hide. We're also using it high level as we said. So we still have the factory G35 radio in the dash. Now just like any time we put a system in a car, we like to spend some time and actually listen to it. Now there's not a lot of tuning to be made here. It's just basically check the crossovers to make sure that 80 hertz works because it's either 80 or 60 for the highs. There's no real adjustment there. So it's fairly simple and straightforward. We just want to make sure that the gain overlap we use, the negative five for the front and the negative five for the sub are enough. If they're not, we can repeat the process and go to let's say negative 10 like we said on the subwoofer. But the only way to find out in this case is to listen to it. You ready? Now I'm not going to lie, I feel like I want a little bit more sub. What are you thinking? Yeah, definitely. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and go to 10 and like we said, you just have to repeat the process. Put the disc back in, mm -hmm. unplug the speakers, set the crossovers to all pass. If you are using something that has clean and has a bass knob plugged into it, which this thing doesn't, make sure you unplug the bass knob. They give you plenty of warnings, unplug the bass knob. Yeah. I'm gonna go in the back, he's gonna go in the front. We'll be I'm back in a second. And through the magic of video, we went ahead and got that done. Well, I have to tell you, and I, uh, tell me if you agree with this, that is an amazing amount of sound. Oh, for one amplifier. small Holy amplifier. Holy cow. Yeah. Now, 
the the test the challenge as it were when we got the amplifier was what could we do with this now we were skeptical to say the least that something right. this small and especially after working with the previous pbr amplifier the one that we compared it to the 300 it did not have sack as it were it wasn't in your face the yeah this being class d much more powerful that bigger power wire is definitely feeding this amplifier yep. and you you can hear you can feel the yeah the, yeah this is impressive really nice. there's no yeah. doubt about it i would you know naturally we're going to run this amplifier in fernando's car for a while <laughs> see yeah to have some fun with it but right off the bat the initial impression of this is definitely like wow this is impressive yeah like like for that small 400 watts is like wow eh? it's a fun time to be in car audio yeah. because these small amplifiers are just so powerful i would have if you'd have told me this years and years ago that these little like this little this little tiny thing amplifiers was yeah. gonna rock my world i'd have been like you're crazy mm, no because they didn't they I couldn't like this big exactly i need a big amp but in this case we don't need a big amp we need a nice little amp definitely giving this one two thumbs up yep correct you're only seeing one of mine because the other one's holding the camera, <laughs> but it's very nice. Now this isn't only built for a car. The reason why it's small and why Rockford started working on this small amp technology in the first place is because of things like ATVs, motorcycles, jet ski, all of those vehicles that are that are tiny, small battery type small vehicles. Small spaces. It just happened that as cars evolved, we needed smaller amplifiers to put them in places that you wouldn't normally put an amplifier. As you saw, that amplifier, you could hide that thing almost anywhere. And to get this result with that, yeah, that's, that's amazing. awesome. Now, I probably wouldn't bury it anywhere like up in a dash or anything like that. You no. definitely want some air around it for circulation because right. I'm pretty sure it's gonna get hot. We've been playing it for about 15 minutes. Let's take a look. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not gonna arc of the covenant up on this thing, but I am just gonna touch it. Yeah, it's, it's definitely warm, but there again, it's a heat sink. It's designed to get hot. All right, guys, so this has been this episode of Car Audio Lab. We hope you've enjoyed it. On to the next one. On to the next one. For sure. Thanks, guys. Have a nice night. See you guys later. Bye. <laughs>